Lithium ion batteries. They're all the same, right? If the battery in my phone or laptop needs replacing every few years. Must be the same for cars. Well, you couldn't be more wrong. EV batteries are not only far more durable and well maintained than small consumer items, some of the early EV batteries are lasting much, much longer than originally designed or anticipated. Allow us to explain. Welcome to the channel. I'm Martin Lee. If you like what we do here, remember to subscribe and hit the bell icon so you never miss a future show. So yes, it's true that electric car batteries lose some of their power over time. It's called battery degradation, and it manifests itself in a couple of ways. Firstly, the range will drop, just as the efficiency of a piston engine drops as it ages. But it's possible you'll start to charge a little slower as well. Battery degradation is a moving target. EV technology is moving at a rapid pace. Compare current EVs to even two or three years ago, and you can see how quickly we've moved on. Compare the cars coming out this year with 10 years ago, and they're unrecognizable. So therefore, it's really difficult to accurately pinpoint an exact pattern of how a battery will lose its maximum charge. But there is a saying that we have in the office here, where most of us drive EVs, look after your battery, and your battery will look after you. That often means charging slower when you can, and leaving things like DC rapid charge sessions to when you really need to. And that's all down to heat. You see, extremes of temperature are the arch enemies of lithium ion chemistry. Charge your car fast every day, which involves high power and more internal resistance in the cells, and you generate more heat. Repeat this hundreds of times over many years, and you'll prematurely age your battery. But don't EVs keep themselves cool and warm? You might be asking. Well, yes, they do. A quick search online will see many early Tesla Model S owners, for instance, with over 100. 200 or 500,000 miles on the clock and experiencing battery degradation of less than 10%. Now that's because Tesla focused on keeping the battery in its optimal condition. So when you need to charge quickly, the battery wasn't harmed. And of course, remember that an EV battery isn't one battery. It's hundreds or thousands of smaller cells. Take the 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf. It has 192 different cells. So even if one of those individual cells starts to wear out a little prematurely, there's plenty more power in the pack. There are many one-off examples we could tell you about, like the Nissan Leaf Taxi from England, which has driven almost 200,000 miles on its original battery, often rapid charging, before carrying on with picking up another passenger. And yes, if you also search online, you will find examples of, say, leaf owners in very hot climates like Arizona. They had problems with battery life in the early Nissan Leafs. This is because the leaf relied on passive air cooling, whereas all new EVs will either have an actively air-cooled system or, these days much more common now, a liquid-cooled battery pack. It's designed to quickly dissipate heat when you're charging quickly. You may read online about Tesla owners being told to charge to 80 or 90 percent, basically avoiding a full charge. That's not the case with newer Teslas, well some of them at least, which use a different battery chemistry called lithium ion phosphate, which older models didn't use and were affected by this. Let us explain. The cells in a battery don't like to be charged up to their maximum voltage. So many EV makers actually don't let you do that. It results in slightly less range for those vehicles. But in a Tesla, you are able to charge to 100%, which is really almost 100% of the battery. In many other EVs, the dashboard might say 100% fully charged and really it's only 92 or 95% charged up. Whereas Tesla say, hey, you can charge all the way to full if you need it occasionally for a long journey, but don't do it every day because you'll shorten the life of your car. So owners had the option, in fact, engaging the most ludicrous performance modes in a Tesla even displays a pop-up warning on screen about battery health. Most other EV makers use what's called a battery management system that ensures the cell voltage is neither overcharged or undercharged to the point of damage. They don't want costly warranty claims after all, so the battery in all EVs is very well protected. And finally, let's talk about when a battery is at the end of its life in an EV. Now, we don't see too many of those right now, but what about a day where eventually when the wheels fall off and the rust eats the bodywork? Well, the battery probably has a lot more life in it and a lot of value as well. Firstly, there's the value of the parts should it be recycled. 
But recently, second life uses have included home or commercial battery storage to help with excess energy from renewables or the electrical grid. Now, this is because whilst your car might need to extract a lot of power from a battery, like 50, 100 or 200 kilowatts of power as you're accelerating hard, a good old coffee machine or an air conditioner in a home needs a fraction of that power and the battery is still useful. So that EV battery, when it's no longer in the car, will continue to live a long and happy life, keeping you caffeinated and cool. So in summary, a battery in a phone, laptop or digital camera is vastly different to an EV battery, both in terms of size, obviously, but also how much engineering goes in to ensuring longevity. Now, if you're new to EVs and were worried about battery issues, has this video helped you learn just a little more? Do you drive a very high mileage EV, which is still providing plenty of use long after a combustion engine would have expired? Let us know in the comments below and we'll keep the conversation going. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up icon and it tells us that you want us to make more videos just like this. And we'll see you on the next one.